2020 was a quietly successful year for Vodafone UK, with the operator being the first to bring key new industry technologies to the British public for the first time. We'll start off talking about their Dynamic Spectrum Sharing or DSS. DSS allows operators to deploy 4G and 5G radio access network technologies dynamically on a single block of spectrum. This means that the resources can be allocated in a dynamic fashion to suit network demand rather than relying on fixed static blocks to support multiple radio access technologies within a wider block of spectrum which is how things used to be done. Vodafone started to deploy dynamic spectrum sharing in 2020 on their 2100 MHz spectrum and a massive difference it made. From these coverage map screen grabs, you can see the pre-DSS 5G footprint that Vodafone had within the M25 and on the lower one after. And the difference is absolutely enormous. DSS was able to augment the 5G coverage so much for a number of reasons. Firstly, the 2100 MHz which DSS is deployed on has substantially improved propagatory characteristics compared to the 3.x GHz which Vodafone were exclusively deploying 5G on prior to the deployment of dynamic spectrum sharing. Secondly, deploying 3.x GHz 5G meant installing a whole new range of equipment. Primarily, Vodafone used active antenna units, which we can see on this picture here, which meant substantial works to site and therefore slow deployment. Whereas the beauty of dynamic spectrum sharing is that with the modern radios that Vodafone have deployed to support 4G on 2100 MHz, it was just a software upgrade to enable dynamic spectrum sharing with 4G and 5G simultaneously on these radios. And therefore, they could rapidly light up 5G coverage using DSS to huge areas of London Contrast this software-based strategy with the large physical deployment requirements of deploying a C-band network, and you can see why some operators are really quite massive fans of dynamic spectrum sharing using their existing spectrum portfolio. Within field testing software Network Signal Guru, Vodafone's DSS looks like this. You can see the 15 megahertz bandwidth of the NR bearer and the quite reasonable throughput, especially given that this is using two layers out of the four transmit capability the site has. Clearly, given four layers, 256 QAM and a range of LTE carriers in combination with the NR bearer in a souped up EMDC configuration, the maximum throughput can be quite substantial. Field testing software can also give away current or upcoming DSS deployments. In the case of Vodafone, we were seeing MB SFN subframes on the L21 SIB2s prior to it being commercially available. And in addition to that, the network was requesting band one NR capability as well. Both of these rather strongly gave away that DSS was imminently going to come. And sure enough, it did. Moving on from dynamic spectrum sharing, the next new technology that Vodafone brought to the UK market is OpenRAN. And they did this using the Mavenir platform to Powys in Wales. The OpenRAN site broadcast 2G and 4G on 900 MHz using a VRAN architecture, which is covered in detail on the mobile network website, which I will link below. 
OpenRAN is a key development within the mobile network space. Previously, operators have been heavily tied to proprietary equipment from the big multinational established radio access network vendors. However, due to various geopolitical situations, especially around Huawei, and the fact that being limited to a small number of suppliers is not ideal for a number of business reasons, OpenRAN has really started to flourish as of late and Vodafone is investing heavily in it and plans to deploy a substantial amount of sites with OpenRAN over the coming years. So this is definitely something to watch out for during 2021. On the subject of 4G 900 MHz, we also saw it on the Jubilee Line underground cellular solution, where Vodafone have deployed 2 by 10 MHz of 4G 900 MHz, in addition to other bands available dependent on where exactly you are within the Jubilee Line system. Curiously though, we didn't come across any 10 MHz paired 4900 MHz on the London surface. What I suspect might be happening is Vodafone is preparing to get that block of spectrum out there as DSS 4G plus 5G 900 MHz in the near future, which we may well see in 2021 so instead of jumping to get it 4g instead we'll get 4g and 5g on the band at the same time on the subject of things which started in 2020 and we'll see a lot more of in 2021 vodafone started to deploy their 5g monopoles now similar to the o2 ones we saw in the last video these are part shrouded where the 2G, 3G and 4G antennas are in a shrouded top compartment and then the 5G equipment is bare below that. So the two types that I've seen are Ericsson which uses Ericsson's air line of active antennas whereas the Huawei ones use Huawei's active antenna units instead. Now, while some of these have been deployed as Moran upgrades to existing 2G, 3G, 4G shared poles, some of them have been deployed unilaterally, such as the one that you've been seeing here, which is a Vodafone unilateral unwind 5G pole. So Within this picture, you can see there are actually a whole range of telecommunication masts with the Vodafone 2G to 5G pole being but one of them. There's also an EE3 site and then to the side of that, so far away from the Vodafone unilateral pole, is the old O2 shared pole which used to carry the O2 services as well as Vodafone's with O2 being host and Vodafone sharer. Talking about O2 zones, in the O2 Ericsson zone, we also started to see full LTE refarming on 2100 MHz for Vodafone customers using O2 host sites. So that meant EARFTN 323 instead of 347. Within the O2 Ericsson host zone, we also came across a 5G architecture change. Previously on the O2 Ericsson sites, which host also Vodafone 2G to 5G, two 5G radios per sector have been deployed to provide 5G for the two operators. This generally either meant two 88R radios per sector or one massive MIMO active antenna unit and one 88R radio. However, 
Latterly, we came across some O2 Ericsson host sites which only have one HAR radio per sector, but are broadcasting both Vodafone and O2 5G. The final topic I have to talk about is SMS over Wi-Fi calling. Historically, Vodafone customers were not able to send and receive SMS messages over Wi-Fi calling, but towards the end of 2020, customers started to report being able to do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this roundup of Vodafone in 2020. That just leaves the EE video to be made, which I will try and fit round my work rotor. So I hope to see you then.